Are you serious? Hello, this is How To Kill An Hour. My name is Marcus Bronzy. On today's show, we are joined by a dear mate of How To Kill An Hour, Nick Bright. How's it going, man? You right, Nick? What's going on, Bronzy, mate? It's been a, uh, be, as they say, a hot minute since I've been on the show. It's been a hot few months, mate. I like, well, actually a cold few months because we've had a winter between, between you being on the show last summer. And last time you were on the show, Nick, I forgot to press record before <laughs> we started the show. And I've not done that since until now. So Nick and I have spoken for about a minute and we've just had to pretend that we've not spoken for about a minute because I forgot to press record again. This whole chat has been rehearsed. But I mean, to be honest with you, anyone that watches TV or whatever, it's all rehearsed and fake anyway. You know, when people do stuff off the cuff, it's never off the cuff. Sorry to ruin it for everybody. Exactly. Except for like when there's animals, right? You might notice presenters get a slightly nervous look when animals are on screen because animals, however much you train them, still could just take a massive dump wherever they are. And I feel like that would be, I don't know, have you had anything, I know you've not had like an animal dump on live TV, but have you (laughs) you had anything go like that? Crazy (laughs) feeling. I've I've been quite lucky, actually. Um, You know, I've never had to work with with animals taking dumps live on TV. Um, <laughs> sometimes co-presenters might though, you know. <laughs> the, the big question is, you know, do they do they stand up or sit down? But, you know, we'll leave that for another time. <laughs> you know, I've still been getting, um, I've still been getting people approaching me for that. In fact, I think that's one of the th- things on the show that's probably stuck out the most over the last few years. Not the tech conversation at all. It's whether you stand up or sit down when you go for a shit. And Nick, you were part of the conception of that, mate. Yeah, the, the the very beginning, I was there, you know, in my caveman outfit when it started, talking <laughs> about it, and uh, you know, here we are. I can't even. That must have been about three years ago now, maybe even more. Oh, fuck knows, mate. It was before lockdown, and that's just years ago for me. Do you know what I mean? So, um, before we crack on with today's show, where where are we at now with lockdown for you, bruv? How are you feeling? Um. Pff- to be honest with you, man, I'm I'm pretty used to it now. You know, <laughs> yeah. like at the at the start, people were like, "Ah, oh, this is so difficult." Like, blah blah blah. I think the most difficult thing now is, you know, you just touched on it there. We've been through winter, um, and for us in the southeast, because uh, the UK kind of got divided into different parts, really, when yeah. um, when Christmas came around, and different areas had different restrictions. But for us, we've been kind of fully locked down since before Christmas. So we, we couldn't really see our families and stuff like that um, around Christmas time, which which didn't, this is not what I'm saying bothered me, no offence, mum and dad, but like, um, <laughs> you know, I can go without seeing my fam because, you know, nowadays there's so many ways you can speak to people and get in touch and blah, blah, blah. It's cool. But it's just the, the, the length of time that we've been in lockdown now. I'm just ready for, I, you know, I'm not even really a big pub guy or anything like that, but I'm just ready to, be able to go to places when I want to go there, you know? 100%. You know what? I am not a pub guy, but I'm a pub garden guy, Nick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Summer's day in the UK, when it, you've got those plus 20 degree temperatures out there, a nice cold beverage. Oh, mate, I love it. Because it, it reminds me of having good conversation and just being outside and having a laugh with your mates on a nice mm-hmm. on a nice Saturday or Sunday. Do you know what I mean? But you better believe, Nick, when, when pubs are open again, right, I am finding a pub with a hotel room connected to it uh-huh. and i'm going there early doors and i'm staying there till the thing closes because i'm like i don't know how long this will last for we might go into another lockdown my mindset is is if we're out of lockdown how long till we're back into lockdown again but anyway look i won't crack i won't go on about that too much uh before we crack on with today's show though nick i just want to let you know i got an email uh, a few days ago saying hi marcus how's it going hope all <laughs> is well i have some cool information that might interest you Your podcast, How to Kill an Hour, has a good performance in some of the rankings over the last 30 days. I was like, oh, some rankings. Okay, Mm, cool. What rankings are these? Yeah, not all. I was like, rude. (laughs) Disrespect. We are 37th most popular podcast in the technology section in Iceland. Come on. Come on. Come on. Don's in Reykjavik are locked in right now. Come on. (laughs) Top 50 in Ukraine slash Nigeria. Uh, why why is it ukraine slash night they're not even near each other i think they were just like the same stats so right, he okay. squashed them together 
I yeah. thought I get what I get his thinking though, because he he didn't want me, he didn't want to waste time with this email. A- if, aren't you half Nigerian? I am. So am I taking this? Whoa, am I taking this? Is That's this because of saying. me? Hold tight, <laughs> all the man them in uh, Abuja yes. and uh, in Lagos. That's Ki- it, man. Kiev as well, locked in. I don't know, man. Shout out, shout out to all my uncles out there, and I might have some in the Ukraine as well. Who knows? <laughs> We're top one hundred in Hungary, Nick. Yes, in the technology. Category. Budapest. I hear ya. Oh, I want to go to Budapest. I've not gone. I've never gone. Have I've you? never been either. Oh, no, never, never. Yeah, never. Yeah, I'd, cool. I'd, I'd love to go. It's meant to be a, an amazing. Mate, they, uh, you, you know, this is the thing about this pandemic, isn't it? There's like, it's made you. It's made people and everybody realize how much they love traveling and how much they want to go to different places. And yeah. there's so many. There's loads of places on my bucket list that I need to hit up, man. Yeah, man, a hundred percent, man. Yeah, yeah, and I, that's another thing. When we're allowed out, I am rinsing my passport, mate. So yeah, yeah there you go. We're, we're big out there, man. I think I was the most impressed with uh, all of my uh, Icelandic fans. Shout out to all of you as well, because um, I didn't know that we were big out there in those low Hin- temperatures. International. I mean, Reykjavik it is pretty high up on the list of places I want to go to as well. This was before the pandemic because yeah. I think a couple of years ago it was um, it was voted as the the number one city to visit in the world, actually. So, um, yeah, I gotta go. What's Reykjavik got in it? What's it? What does it do? Well, it's the whole of what does it Iceland, do? Sorry. really. What does so it do? Sorry, mate. Y- y- it's just a, it's just a beautiful country. You have okay. got like amazing waterfalls. You have right. got the geysers there. The um, hey, the, the, hey, yeah, hey. I know, right? The the glaciers um, and the, uh, the 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 natural um, springs. So that yeah. the, the the hot, you know, like the hot pools that are just mm. heated up by the earth, mm. like. I'm surprised all the kind of car filming and that that you do these days, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Top Gear out here, you know what I mean? I'm surprised they haven't, you haven't been to Iceland to do any filming because it's just like, just a naturally beautiful backdrop and landscape. We did, we did um, Sweden. I did go to Uria in Sweden with Ford okay. when we were doing, um, uh, I think it was like that Ford Edge or something. And it was, check this, Nick, it's cold, yeah? I thought I knew what cold was. Mm-hmm. Until I stepped into a minus twenty degree atmosphere, is <laughs> it felt? I've never experienced cold like this. It, and you know what the weird thing is? It didn't feel as cold as it does in the UK because it was so dry. The cold out right, there, okay. but it was it was fascinating to see, just see things like people breathing into a mask and it freezing immediately, or somebody's <laughs> eye watering a little bit because a wind chill hit it and then their eyelashes having icicles on them like within seconds it was insane they had special drones flying around like big dji professional drones not like them the ones that we fly around for fun and one of them just started flying off in the wrong direction because it was just like nah mate too cold it was like it was trying to look for a warmer environment that's absolutely ridiculous <laughs> what, just this random drone flying around was like nah it's too cold mate. Yeah, i'm just, out of here just like not having it we tried to put our dji drone up in the air and it was like minus 20 warning signs are like mark, 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 mark. stop this so you're like all right cool <laughs> take it down it's insane and also in um in sweden at that time of year when we're there it was sun up at about sunrise it was about 9 30 a.m i think and then by about 2 p.m it would like dusk was forthcoming and it was dark at four very very fascinating t- to just be in a country where it's dark for that amount of time as well yeah yeah interesting it's, it, well in the in the arctic circle in the summer and it, it doesn't get dark yeah um you know it's, it stays light for the whole for the for, for the like the whole day it's yeah. really bizarre you know and then the opposite in winter right yeah in the winter it's just dark all the time yeah mad mad i can only imagine what that's like um but yeah anyway before we uh, crack on with what's happening in the world of tech nick i like to ask how everyone's been killing time how you been killing time recently nick because i've got loads of stuff to tell you about um mine is not exciting so i'm sorry for everybody um who <laughs> who was expecting like a really really exciting story but i've just moved house um that's a month exciting. ago so exciting. yeah i mean but it's not exciting to listen to is what i mean it's exciting for me <laughs> but um yeah i've just moved house so like just sort you know when you move house it's just endless sorting of stuff mm, mm. it's like when you start packing up the place where you used to live you're yeah. like oh why have i got all this crap i'm gonna throw some of this crap away and then when you move into the place that you move to you're like why did I bring this crap with me? I'm going to throw some of this crap away. <laughs> and it's just like, <laughs> and then at the end of it all, you're still like bombarded with crap. Yeah. And it's just, it makes you realize actually how, um, as humans, 
I think naturally we're all quite hoardish mm. um, and we can we can actually do a lot more to, to to kind of cleanse and get rid of a lot of stuff that we have because I've been here now for I think five weeks six weeks something like that and there's like like bare boxes here that I haven't even opened and I don't even know what's in them and I don't mm. even miss it if you know what I mean so yeah um, I just think to myself should I just pick up this box and just take it down the tip without even looking in it because it's the minute you look in it and you're like oh but you know I might need that I might use that blah blah, blah. You, 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 that's how the ruthless streak ends oh, up dying in you it comes you know what I'm lucky I've got the studio space here to kind of scratch my I might need this little techie thing itch right but at home Nick my worst crime for hoarding is because I'm I'm pretty good at like just look don't need it throw it away if it's an important thing I can scan it if it's a if it's a letter scan it and have it online in the cloud or whatever or if it's something that I like need I want to have it now or I, or I just get rid of it but one thing I hoard is leads Nick mm-hmm. leads I'm like I might need that half a meter HDMI lead that came for free with this I might need this little jack converter this is in my yard bro I've got a box you know how you have like that a uh, drawer full of like just drawer full of stuff in your yeah, house yeah. i've got a box full of leads and i swear to god it's got like lead it's got like scart leads in it and stuff like that you remember scart yeah i used to I mean, plug <laughs> the the chunkiest like maddest style of lead that just will never get used anymore what you're still you're still keeping those still got scart mate i've got a scart extender and a scart hub so you know like when you you, you can plug like a a, a four-way extension into your usual plug at home for electricity i got one for scart you know multiple scart inputs and i look at it i'm like you're never going to use this but i'm like in some part, part of my mind i'm like one day i'm going to come across an archive tape of like michael jordan when he was like 10 years old or something like that. And everyone will be like, huh, have you got anything that can play this? And I might have like my old little VCR from somewhere and my SCART lead that I can connect into my TV and watch it. But then really, I'm not, not going to need for it. But yeah, maybe I should get rid of it. Maybe I'll do that, Nick. You're going to be one of those like, you know, in 20 years time, one of those retro guys who's <laughs> absolutely laughing though, because you've got all this retro tech that's worth big dough. Shot in scar adapters for yeah. 150 quid a pop. I'll be rich. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it'd there be worth go, it. Man. You know, they'll be like antiques. <laughs> Are you doing lots of uh, building at the moment, the furniture? Um, haven't done loads yet because we need to get actual building work done in yeah. the in, in the place. So yeah. th- them lot are coming this week to, to do some actual building work. And then after like everything's set up, that's when it becomes king of the flat packs you know yes. you, you have to start doing all that i've done i've done a little bit but nowhere near as much as um what i'll need to do i already know that but i'll tell you a secret that's not very secret you know because i used to work in home base um when i was at college and which is a diy store basically and it sells furniture i uh i actually love building flat pack furniture so <laughs> i'm here for it <laughs> I feel like you are the kind of guy that you've got an outfit, like you've got you've got a special pair of jeans that you put on, you've got your building t-shirt. And of course, Nick, this ain't the first time that we've said this on a podcast. You have the pencil, Nick. And what do we do with that pencil? Bang it behind your ear, bro. Oh, sh- Just put that pencil behind your ear. Look like you know what you're doing. Yes. Um, but definitely not jeans. They're so restrictive. <laughs> when, when you, you I can't wear jeans when I'm doing flat pack. I've, I've got um, tracks, a special pair of tracky bees that I just bang on. You yes. Know, like... Got, got to be comfortable when you're in the flat pack zone. I hear that, man. So you enjoy the flat pack, but uh, have you got an, like an electric drill? Because I feel, not drill, an electric screwdriver, because I feel like screwdrivers, doing them manually, that's not fun. But if you've got an electric scr- like screwdriver, you're just like... Yeah, yeah. so yeah. I, did, I didn't I did have one. And then before I moved here, I bought one. Um, bought nice. Bosch! Um, nice. Cordless one. Um, cordless so too, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, because, you know, you don't want to be all you know tethered to a plug socket and that. Uh, nice. so yeah i bought one of those and to be honest with you it did make um i had to move my wardrobes from the previous place and these wardrobes are massive and it made kind of putting them back up a lot easier nice nice all right mate well oh listen wish you all the best of luck with getting everything sorted at your house mate do you know what i mean thank you very Before much time look at it if, you, well, if we're ever allowed you know what i mean yeah yeah in the future yeah Anyway, uh, the way I've been killing time, I've been doing loads, Nick. We, um, a couple of episodes back, myself and Kay Curd tried out the new Apple Watch. And you know what? Like, I think we gave a really big description about all of the features and how cool it is. But what's interesting is Apple are doing something that I thought that they would be doing 
a little bit earlier than they have, but they're doing it well. So I don't know if you've seen this, Nick, but they've kind of added this whole Apple fitness section, which is like this digital workout classes, kind of like um, similar to Peloton. You jump on your bike and you'd like watch different classes with Apple fitness. They've got a bunch of trainers film them doing workout routines and you can watch them on your Apple devices. Have you seen them, Nick, or not? I have not. Explain to me. So it's just basically you go onto the fitness app. It's a subscription thing. You pay for a year or a month and they've got a bunch of workouts. So you could do a bit of yoga, Nick. You can do some stretching. You can do some cardio. You can do some weightlifting. And it's just got a range of exercises, but it's all created by Apple for Apple customers to watch on their devices. So we right. did, we had a full chat about it. But what I've noticed, they've started adding little bits in. So I just, I use the activity tracker called the workout app. And they've just started adding little things in, like they've got this little walk, time to walk section. And every time I go on it, they just keep adding on these little kind of interviews. So they've actually created their own podcasts, slapped them into the Apple Fitness app. And when you're just going for walks, you can just listen to podcasts from the likes of Dolly Parton, Baba Wallace, Ibrim X, like loads of like artists or sports people. It's it's kind of like, I'm finding it fascinating that Apple's kind of moving in that direction where they're actually creating content and I feel like it's it's definitely for people in lockdown. Like, I mm. feel like this has spurred it. They've gone, right, this is the time to keep people in the ecosystem. So, yeah, I've been doing that, man. So that's been quite interesting to hear, like, Dolly Parton's thoughts on life while you're going <laughs> for a walk for 30 minutes. Plus, they bang a couple of tunes in there. Can't lie, I'm not really the biggest Dolly Parton fan. She's a legend and all that. Don't, don't before anyone comes for me. But, yeah, <laughs> that um, was pretty cool. It depends if you're walking nine or five miles didn't work as well oh. nine, to, nine to five oh, come on. <laughs> well, well, it could have been better it could have been better um or if you're going to link jolene oh there you That's, go i'm out of dolly parton songs now though i'm, yeah. I'm not gonna lie um, yeah, 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 but, yeah. But, but do you know what it's been so long since i had an apple watch so i used to have one back in the day um i think it was i think mine might have even been first generation um and then my house got broken into and it got stolen. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, they've changed so much since I had them, uh, since I had one. Because when I had it, it was it was massively reliant on your phone. If you didn't yeah, have your phone yeah. on you, the watch was essentially just a watch. That's all it could do. Um, whereas now they're they're self sufficient, aren't they? You could you, you can do so much even if you don't have your phone. Yeah, man. So it's cellular. So I've got this. You, you can buy a cellular edition if you want. I've got the cellular one. Yeah, man. If 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 you've got a digital SIM card hooked up to it for a few extra bob a month on your price plan, your watch can work independently from your phone, which means it's cool if you go for a run because you can like download. You can do it offline as well, but you can have like music on your watch that you yeah. listen to. So you can literally just leave your phone go for a run, be free, be away from people. And if somebody does call you, yeah, you can answer it on your phone. Um, and yeah, I mean, like, I think what Apple are doing with all their products is they're kind of just focusing on keeping you in the ecosystem. And with the watch, it was one of those things where I was very much like, oh, what's the point? I've got the phone, it's going to do the same thing. But when it's, once you slap it on, just little things, like I've said this a million times on the pod, just opening my laptop, Nick, I don't have to put in a password when my watch is on and unlocked on my wrist. So yeah, yeah. when I forget to put my watch on or my watch is in the other room or something like that and I have to put in my password, I'm like, oh, this takes, oh, this is ages. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, Apple have made a big thing about health and fitness and I think mental mental fitness and, and physical fitness is super important during lockdown as well. So the fact that they've added in loads of extra fitness tracker stuff, there's full detection, all the kind of stuff that I've spoken about on a podcast a few episodes back, so I won't go over it again, is just like nice. And I just it's just, just good to see them using their Apple weight to pull someone in like Dolly Parton for an interview. Cause I feel like with all due respect, you know, we've had legends on the show, like, you know, man, like Jazzy Jeff and that. But if yeah. I wanted to listen to a Dolly Parton interview, there's not many people that could really get them talking. Do you know what I mean? So I think Apple should use their weight in the game to get some amazing people onto their, I mean, they could make the best podcast. If Apple called Obama, he'd be there for that conversation, wouldn't he? hundred percent, hundred percent. You know, they, they, when they launched Beats One, which is now Apple Music One, isn't it? Yeah. Um, when they launched that, you know they had they got Drake doing shows, yeah. Elton John doing shows. You know, like probably more. I mean, I haven't delved too much into into Beats or slash Apple Music One, but they can get pretty much whoever they want to do shows. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, missing a trick there, Apple. If you're listening, me and Nick Bright, Bosch, 
Yeah, just get us show. to do shows, you know, um, Barack you Obama, go. How to Kill an Hour, you know, same thing. Standard, standard. standard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on Netflix, I've also been watching Behind Her Eyes. It's a sh- it's currently, as we're recording this, Nick, uh, start of March 2021. It is the number one show on Netflix at the mm. moment. Um, I've seen bare people talking about this, you know. Ooh. It's on, it's on the, it's on, again, because we're in lockdown and there's so many things kind of that you need to get through slash do. This is on the list. I won't spoil it for you then, right? This is going to be a spoiler-free review, right? Watched it. It's definitely a bit more me than I thought it would be. Uh, If you know what kind of stuff I'm into, then, you know, it might rub you up the right way. You might get what I'm saying. But um, I called it, Nick. I called it. Have you ever watched a show and you're like halfway through and you're like, I guess that's, I, I bet that's happening. I do that all the time. How good does it feel when you get time. it right? Yeah, as yeah, well. yeah. I, I don't know why I do it as well. Like I'll watch, I'll be watching a show and I'll be like, nah, 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 nah. He ain't the killer because blah, blah, blah. Yeah, like, yeah, she's yeah. the killer. Like because yeah. it make you, she, they make you, they're making you want to think that he's the killer. Like, yeah, yeah, so exactly. Stupid. What's sick about that though is if you get it wrong, people don't have to remember. It. You can just, oh, you know, it's just a little guess. But when you're right, you're like, yeah. yeah. By the way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's the same as when um you know if you're watching football and, and it goes to penalties or whatever and you're like he's gonna miss if mm. he scores it's just like oh well if he yeah. misses you're like i told you <laughs> see i told everybody <laughs> told you he's gonna go bottom left and miss told you the more specific you are in that situation it's amazing when you're right but yeah no, i literally called it halfway i was like oh, i bet this is going on and then i sent a message to, to a couple of mates and was like I bet this is happening and they were very good they didn't say anything and then when it well, at the end I was like I freaking knew it but yeah man it's an interesting watch um, it's something that's got the kind of thrillingness that you get out of US dramas but it's based in the UK man it's pretty cool nice mm. show check that out I, I see Netflix do that quite a bit don't they um, they, they have these kind of UK dramas which feel like US dramas yeah, um, yeah. what was the one what was the one oh, that came out like last year and it felt like it was filmed like in Manchester and that, but it felt mad like American. That's oh, really going to bug me. I can't remember. Uh, what we need called. to get to the bottom of this. Um, it, 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 we're not going to remember. It was, it, was a, it was like a, it was like a murder mystery vibe anyway. I'm terrible with stuff like this, bruv. Um, was it the one in like, was it the one sent in the nineties? Uh, White lines. I'm, I'm, no, no, no! But that, that as well, yeah. Because um, Kel Spellman from was in that. Yeah. The Stranger is the one that I'm talking Ooh, about. Oh yes, The Stranger. That that kind of felt mad American, but obviously everybody in it was British, and it was filmed in in Stockport, just outside Manchester. A lot of it was filmed around there. Yeah, and um, yeah, that that that's a good. If, if you haven't seen that yet, I mean, it, it's been a while. Um, you should have by now. But if not, bang it on. Yeah, it's a good one. That was a good one. Do you think they just, well, the cameramen, like, it looks too UK and grainy. It looks too EastEnders. So let's just add more sunlight. Yeah, that, but that that's one of the things I noticed about The Stranger, actually, the colour grading on, um, not to get too boring and technical, because it, uh, when it comes to stuff like that, I really don't know too much of what I'm talking about. But mm. the colour grading on, on the show just looked different to what uh, maybe it's just because as as a brit we're used to eastenders kind of gray looking <laughs> which <Gray> is people <laughs> but should should say that is reflective of society uh, a lot of the time because in the uk as i look out the window right now it's gray it's not miserable <laughs> today but it's just it's just gray like the sky is gray yeah you know um so yeah but i know it's like the the greens of the grass were like it, it looked like kind of like a desperate housewives vibe you know what i mean Where yeah, the grass man. is really green and the sky is really blue oh, vivid you, you might like you're gonna like behind our eyes then nick you're gonna like it you know mm. you're gonna like it all right interesting uh, yeah so i've been killing some time with that mate called it I, I look forward to hearing everyone guess about that on twitter don't look at look at the hashtags on twitter nick because there's bare spoilers on there mate i know this is the thing um, about social media now mate you know it's insane Speaking of streaming, right, I've been doing some digging around because I'm a bit of a nerd for stats and stuff. But do you know Disney Plus launched about a year ago, right? Uh, yeah. They are kicking the fucking shit out of it when it comes to streaming. I got sent some stats. Like, I'm a bit of a nerd, so I get sent, like, stats for, like, streaming, like, who's doing well. And I had a look at this, and this is the market share for streaming. And this is crazy. And I'm, the reason I'm bringing this up with you, Nick, um, I really I should bring it up with Funk because he called this when we spoke about Disney Plus. He said... Disney Plus would be absolutely kicking ass, right? 
in the streaming wars once they start pulling all the things like Avengers back and releasing back catalog stuff. So mm. as it stands in 2021 at the start, right? When I'm, I'm I'm looking at a pie chart of all the big streaming companies, right? Apple TV three percent, right? A- Apple TV struggled, didn't they? Struggling, mate. Yeah. Netflix thirty one percent. Okay, cool. All right, nice. Third in the market. It's not bad. Moving around. Prime twenty two percent. All right. Disney Plus thirteen percent. But Hulu fourteen percent. And what people don't know, Disney owns Hulu. Mm. So they're coming up at 30% within a year of being out. They've managed to just come and absolutely smash this market to pieces, mate. Yeah, it's, it, you know what? It's weird because when Disney Plus launched, I remember there was a lot of noise around like, oh, we've already got Amazon, we've already got yeah. Netflix, I'm already paying for Now TV, you know, how many things can I pay for, blah, blah. But gradually people have just gone, oh, you know what? I'm just going to buy it as well. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know people that were like, no, you know what? No, forget this, man. I'm just going to, why am I going to get Disney for what? To watch The Jungle Book? Oh, whatever, mate. And now I feel like with things like WandaVision and stuff like that, it's yeah. people are like, yeah, no, I need to get my Disney Plus. I need the, my I need my Marvel fix, mate. The thing is, right, a lot of that will be people in our generation and above who mm. who only see and remember Disney as, you know, cartoons yeah. and stuff like that. Whereas, you know, you don't necessarily I mean, we know that Disney and Marvel you know a hand in hand star wars as well right yep. um we know all that stuff but you kind of just forget it because when you say disney you think you know mickey mouse or yeah. whatever uh but actually there's so much you know content and big franchises that disney own that actually when you deep it it's no surprise to me that um disney plus is starting to grow because you know just for that marvel stuff alone it, it's that that right there is such a asset for disney to have it's insane. It's insane. And, and and also, they, like you said, Nick, they own so much. You forget, like, like you know, obviously that Marvel, right? That's one arm that they've got, right? But then you think about, like, Fox. That's like all of the Simpsons, mm. all that kind of, all the Fox TV shows. And now I think with Disney, their biggest, their, their problem was, is they want to stay family friendly and clean. So they can't put, like, for example, it's hard for them to market things like Deadpool, which is a Marvel yeah. film, but it's proper not for kids. But they've now got this whole this stars section that they've opened up, and it's and it's basically adult content. So on my Disney Plus, I can set a password. So if you want to go into stars content, you put in like my password one two three four whatever, and then you can access all of this adult stuff. So now that they can kind of be proud about their adult content and stay Disney, and they've got Hulu running on the side as well. I'd Funk Butcher called it, and in my head I was like, "Nah, no one's gonna knock Netflix off the top spot." But the fact that Disney have done that within a year just shows mm. like they are not messing around. Like, just think about it. Think about you're a businessman in whatever industry, and somebody opens up a shop this time last year, and by 2021 they are taking a third of sales or a third of the audience in it. It's crazy, man. That is. Yeah, that's they're they're patting each other on the backs, rubbing their hands together, looking for a big bonus. Yeah, yeah. They've smashed it since launch. Yeah, like I said, I remember people saying that they think it was going to be a flop. Yeah, and I'm just thinking, I don't know, man. A, a, a company like Disney, are they really going to flop? But then, you know, like we said, Apple uh, haven't managed to do as well with their um, streaming service yet. But I, w- I wouldn't put it past Apple to be able to pull something out of the bag, that's for sure, because, yeah. you know, we, we, if one company can, and a company that have got a lot of... All the monies. Yeah, a lot of <laughs> money in the bank, uh, yeah. then Apple can do something as well. And look, at the end of the day, from a consumer's point of view, the first thing that we, we do is we like to complain. We like to go, ah, oh, you know, I don't want to have to pay for Netflix and Amazon and uh, Disney Plus and Apple um, TV and blah, blah, blah. But actually, um, what it does is it, it it increases competition and competition is only good for the consumer. Yeah. You know, like I, I'll, I'll give Sky TV as an example, which is a terrestrial um, satellite TV provider in the UK. Like when Sky had the monopoly um, on the football sorry to keep using football but it's massive in this country but when Sky had the monopoly on the football it's like you know there was no competition for them they were just yep. laughing it's like we can charge what we want now Amazon are getting some rights for the football BT Sport which is another provider over here have got some rights for the football and, and now people are having to think different and having mm-hmm. a you know offer you something a little bit different so as a consumer in my opinion it's only good that all these streaming services are coming out a hundred percent and if you look at the content now that you have using Sky as an example, right? 
their content now is way better. Like when you look at the shows that they have available, I'm like, now nah, you guys have like Sky Atlantic's got shows that are really good, or or, or they'll they'll notice. They'll they'll dig into HBO stuff that's doing well and make sure that they provide that over here. And, and like mm-hmm. like you said, competitions are one. I t- I tell you what, I love my sci fi stuff. Right, Amazon Prime have cornered that sci fi market, mate. They've got so much sci fi content, and I was like, what? what? Why have they got this? But I reckon they realise that there's this massive sort of need for sci fi content, and they've just started creating in that area. And I think, like you said, if we only had Netflix, if we only had Hulu, if we only had Disney Plus, only had Sky, whatever. There's going to be no no variation, no competition. So it just means better content for us. I'm here. I'm here yeah. for the competition, bruv. You know, you, as a consumer, you only win. Uber and black cabs in London. You know, yeah. You're just looking for, as a consumer, the, the, the cheapest alternative, you know. Exactly. Flights, you know, cheap flights and stuff. Now, back in the day when I, when I was, you know, growing up, it was like BA had everything. Mm-hmm. Now, like Ryanair and EasyJet come out. We like to moan about them. But then when you're booking your next uh, motive, it's like, yeah, so how much is the Ryanair flight? Right, you know what I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You know, <laughs> I've noticed that. Like whenever I go on stag dues, or when I used to go on stag dues before lockdown, it was always like two parts of the group. It was the ones that were like, "I'm going to use my air miles that I collected through work," <laughs> <laughs> and then the other group that were like, "Yeah, so um, on Ryanair, you can only have one rucksack, so I'm going to bring one pair of socks uh, and uh, a pair of boxes and just make it last." <laughs> do you know what I miss? Is, what's bad is I even miss that about travel now. I even miss the like the hacks to try and get round the the. Mass Mad rules that they've got about what you can take on the flipping plane. You know, you can only take a bag that is like an L shape. It's like Tetris. <laughs> yeah, you have to put, I mean? it, put it in the little cage thing. Flipping. I even uh, missed that. Oh man, that's the one, man. That is the one. Um, so yeah, that's what's happening in the streaming world. Um, speaking about competition in the market. So obviously electric cars have been a super big talking point across the world. And I feel like... Uh, I'm about to talk about a Ford vehicle, but Tesla's definitely changed the game, man. Like in terms of electric vehicles, I feel like they've now with the whole supercharger network and just showing that there's a lot of interest for electric vehicles and kind of creating the infrastructure for people to have electric cars and use them day to day. They've kind of given the rest of the industry a proper boot up the ass to come up with their electric vehicles. Um, there's been a few offerings here and there, Nick. Some of them have been okay. Some of them have been not so okay. But um, in oh, 2019, I was about to say last year, time, all right, yeah. Corona's messed up my yeah. time. is. But in tw- the 2019, they told us that they were going to launch this new electric vehicle. Uh, Ford told us they're going to launch this new electric vehicle. It was going to be an SUV. It was going to be a Mustang. And it was going to be electric. So I was like, oh, all right. You're going to make an SUV Mustang electric. I'm used to driving like, you know, these V8 things around. Uh, and then they actually took us out to LA and they uh, hooked us up. We've we actually actually got to meet Bill Ford actually like you know, hold on you went to L A yeah man yeah but you didn't see this wh- trip Nick wh- where was the where was the invite for that one you know <laughs> like when we're in lockdown man like Marcus is like oh yeah come on the pod Nick come on the pod <laughs> where, where's the invite to go to L A huh? oh brother it was uh, it was only one there was only one space and unfortunately I think you were busy at the time I think oh, you had commitments yeah, yeah man commitments that. but I was yeah. free. Marcus has been on all these amazing trips, you know, <laughs> all these, like, I see, I see the videos. I, I see the to videos. Thought part, Nick. I took Mar- to Thought Park that, that time, That was about remember? five years ago. <laughs> Ma- Ma- Marcus puts up all these videos, like, in amazing places, drone shots of all this course. And I'm like, yeah, man, when, 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 when are we going to get a, a work trip? Where's the, where's the holler? It's, ha- it's coming, Nick. Just, yeah, oh, thanks, yeah. Thank lockdown's giving me the excuse. Yeah, Nick, yeah. after lockdown, don't worry, bruv, I've got you, man. I've got yeah. you, bruv. Uh, Marcus would just disappear. <laughs> won't, won't hear from him for months. But anyway, sorry, I butted in on your story. You you went to LA. Oh, that was it. Yeah, so we went there for the launch of of the of the Mustang Mach E. So yeah, Idris Elba dropped in there. He helped to launch it, and it's they wanted to basically Ford wanted to make an impression on the world with their first electric offering. They promised a car that was going to be a fun drive. It was going to be a Ford drive. It was going to be a Mustang drive, but it was also going to be electric as well. Now it's finally in production. You can order yours and get yours at the end of this year. So they gave us the opportunity to have a drive in one, Nick. I mean, what, what do you want me to tell you about my, my driving electric car? I don't know where you are with electric cars at the moment, Nick. I know, obviously I know you're aware of them, but like, yeah. where do you want me to start? Cause there's quite a bit you can talk about of electric cars, but then some of it is a bit more relevant than others. So for me, 
to be honest with you, when it comes to electric cars, it's all about the range. Okay. Right. Until electric, and I know they're getting better and maybe you can shed some light on this, but until electric cars can increase the range, and I know this comes down to battery capacity more than anything else and the technology that's available when it comes to batteries, but until they can beat the, the um, issues with range, they won't be uh, as successful, uh, anywhere near as success- successful as traditional petrol or diesel cars. And that is because, in my opinion, in America, a three-hour drive daily is normal, mm-hmm. <laughs> like as a commute, you know, mm-hmm. for people going to work. People will drive three hours each, you know, three hours one way and then three hours back. And that's fully acceptable and normal. Um, so until they can... I don't know, um, appeal to the American market. I feel like it's always going to be difficult. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And I think a big thing about that was that supercharger network that they've got out there, right? Which is how do you charge your car? Because you know that feeling you get when you drive, uh, when you have your mobile phone and batteries are better now, but you know that feeling when your phone battery is under 20%? Yeah. It's not nice, That would be it? even worse in a car. Can you imagine? I'd be sweating, yeah, you know? Exactly, 100%. So what they've got, I'll tell you the range of, it's a bit of a weird, not a weird one. It's, a, it's I'm going to try and say this clearly. If I if I mix this up, Nick, or I don't make sense, let me know and I'll go again, right? right. So there's two versions of the Mucky, right? There's the all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, and then there's the rear-wheel drive. And in those two flavors of car, there's an extended range and a standard range. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Wicked. Right. So when it comes to mileage, the all wheel drive has a slightly lower range of, 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 of uh, mileage, but the rear wheel drive has a longer range. Right. Cool. I'll, I'll explain why in a second. Right. So if you got the all wheel drive, and got that at the standard range, that's 248 miles. Okay. If you got the rear wheel drive and got it with the extended range, you can get up to 379 miles per charge. Now, right, okay. that kind of range, obviously we know when you get an optimum range from any car company, they put a little bit of, you know, optimum conditional tax on it, shall we say. So it's going to be slightly less. But 379 on a single charge, that's the kind of... That's what I want to see on the dashboard when I fully charge my car. When I fully filled up my car for petrol, it's got about 350 on the clock at the moment. So 379, that's the kind of number that I'm happy with. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I get think, what I think, you, yeah, go on. I was just going to say, I think that the issue is, mm-hmm. um, like, if you have 300 and something miles on your dashboard with a petrol or diesel car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, if you're driving from... I'm, I can only use the UK as an example here, but if you're driving from Southampton to Inverness, mm-hmm. right, in Scotland, it's, it's a long way. I'm, I don't know how many miles it is off the top of my head, but I kind of feel like it might be more than 300, maybe. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, maybe you can Google it while I'm talking rubbish. But um, <laughs> like, if you do need to refill, you can stop and just refill. And, it's cut, and it takes, what, five minutes, if that? Yeah. Whereas yeah. if you need to stop and recharge... Even on a fast charger, what is the, because I don't know this, maybe, maybe you know, even on the, the kind of like express superchargers that you see in some places, how, what's the shortest possible amount of time that you need to be stopped for? Southampton to Inverness, 584 miles. It's, it's, a, it's a long way. Yeah, let's just call it 600 miles, right? So that's, that's two full charges. And that's, do you know what? You've actually made a really good point when it comes to charge times. That's super, super important with your vehicle. Like, so what's, an interesting thing with electric vehicles is that they are fast. There are fast chargers, right? So there are charge points that means you can um, fast charge your car. So for for this vehicle, for example, um, the Mach-E, it can charge up to 150 kilowatts per hour. I'm going to talk about timings for chargings in a second because it all gets a bit funky. But what you need is it's kind of like at the moment with electric, and this is across most networks for electric charging, it's like going to a petrol station and it having fuel. It's how fast you can get that fuel into your car. Exactly. So, yeah, exactly. So like seven kilowatt chargers are the ones you usually just see on the road. Those are the ones that you see when you charge up your car. So that can take 11 hours, for example, to get a car fully charged up to 80%, or well, sorry, to 80% or a full charge on something like a Marquis, right? Mm -hmm. But then once you start getting to faster charge speeds, I think the Mustang Mach-E can take 150 kilowatts. Once you have charge times like that, so you're just fast, it's like 20 times faster to charge your vehicle. 
And then that's when it starts looking like if you're on the motorway and you pull over and you've got half a tank, you can at that speed pull over, go get a coffee, have a pee, and maybe not five minutes, but 15 minutes later, your car's got a decent charge in it. Uh, but the only thing is, is finding those charges. And that's a big issue as well. And I remember saying that to the guys at Ford when they showed us the mucky, I was like, yeah, but what are you going to do about the network? And again, we say Tesla a lot because they are, they are the kind of not market leader, well, they are the market leader really, but they're the kind of guys that have got it right in terms of charging network. So what Ford have done is they've actually got Ford pass. So you, you sign up to Ford pass, you get an app, you can connect that to your car. And there's actually a part, a network of chargers that are like Ford approved and you can access them at preferential rate and get a charge. So you can actually plan your journey around your charges. So if you want to go to Inverness, yeah, uh, you can look on the map, on the app, and it will say, right, Nick, you've got to stop off Manchester, get a, get a charge here. You've got to stop off in Birmingham, get a charge here. So they're trying to make it easier for you. I know that's, does that, has that helped out a little bit, Nick, or is it still a yeah. bit like, Meh, like it, it does help out, but I just feel like, for all the good that car companies are doing, you know, in, in increasing the range, increasing the, um, you know, battery capacity and all yeah. of that stuff, they're just let down by the network of chargers. There needs to be, yeah. uh, I feel like for us to fully switch to electric cars, um, there, there needs to be a, a, a decent, um, because that's what puts me off. You know, if I was somebody who never really had to drive on the motorway or, or make long journeys and I was just in town, mm. um, then it'd be cool. But the, 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 the thing is, when you live in a city, in the UK anyway, and especially in London, they're trying to push you away from car ownership, whether it's exactly. petrol, diesel, or even electric. You know, they're trying to push you away from car ownership. Mm. So... <sighs> You know, I, 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 I think it's a bit, it's an interesting area for me because I like the idea of an electric car. I've driven quite a few electric cars. Um, my favourite being, <laughs> this is on a track day though, to be honest, not just on a, <laughs> on a not just on a random day. Yeah. Uh, I, I drove the BMW i8, which mm. was like amazing. Um, but I just think the strategy needs to be a bit more joined up because if you can, if the government would, would embrace fully car ownership electric car ownership if you live in a city and then they made it more of an incentive to own an electric car in a city i can only talk about london because it's where yeah. i live so sorry if you don't live in london but i still feel like there's pushback even with electric cars you know like the cost of parking for yeah. for example um i know you don't necessarily have to pay or i don't believe you pay congestion charge you don't yeah, if you've got an electric moment. car and stuff like that which is good but you know, it still costs an absolute bomb to, to, to park in London. So you can't really drive to work, you know, unless you want to pay the extortionate, um, you know, parking charges and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I don't know. It, it, maybe it's not, this is this is me just rambling on. It's not really an electric, an electric car issue. It's not up to the manufacturers to sort that. They're doing good stuff. And to be honest with you, I'm quite excited with what the manufacturers are doing. Predominantly kind of, um, you know, the, 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 the Ford, it looks really good and mm. you've said you've said it's really oh. good actually there's a yeah. few actually that, that you've had um different ends of the spectrum and probably probably trying to target different people but you also had the honda didn't you the honda the um, honda e yeah yeah e which looked amazing because you managed to hook up um <laughs> you hooked up like a nes mini to the to yeah, the screen yeah. and that yeah, and you were yeah. playing like mario kart and yeah, that yeah, i was like this yeah. is sick yeah i think with 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 I think with electric vehicles, one thing that people want to do is they want to make an impact with it. They want it to look futuristic. I think that's a big selling point. So the Honda E just looked future in it, had no wing mirrors, pack full of tech, screens everywhere. I think everyone's trying to make their impact in the industry. And to go back to what you said quickly, I totally understand how you feel, Nick, about, see, that. I feel like the issue with electric vehicles in total across the world, in, in, as a whole across the world, is infrastructure. I can just hear it in your voice. Like the simple solution would be, Nick, there's a charger at the end of your road that will charge your car in 10 minutes. And we're going to make it cheaper for you to own an electric vehicle in the UK. And I think they're trying to do little things. So you currently, you get three grand back if you buy a car that's under 50K. You get um, discounted or free wall chargers from different service providers. I think Ford do something. I don't know if they install it for free, but I think it's a heavily subsidized wall box you get at your house. So if you do have a house and a drive, which means you're probably doing all right in life. Having an electric car is a little bit cheaper than if you don't. 
So there yeah. is some work to be done there, yeah? Um, but, like, I feel like once they say, because we have a target here in the UK, like, by 2030, you, they don't want us to be selling any fossil fuel-powered cars, right? Yeah. So that's only nine years away, bro. Like, it was, tw it was the year 2000 a couple of weeks ago. Do you know what I mean? So... Um, when that happens, I think there's going to be a real period of either it's going to be a period of where everyone's uncomfortable because there's not going to be enough charges or there's going to be a period of change where everyone's just rushing to get their electric vehicle. And then once all that's settled down, I think we'll be OK. But there's, it's like when the new iPhone charger came out, right? Nobody had that lead when you went to their house. They had the, if you've got an old charger or the new charger. Everyone's yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, sorry, yeah, mate, yeah. I've only got the old one. Now, that you was just jokes. say, exactly, you remember that? <laughs> no, I, I used to roll with an adapter. But now you just say to somebody, yo, have you got an iPhone charger? They're like, yeah. It's like everyone expects you to have the smaller lightning cable. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's just, it becomes the, the, the yeah. industry standard, I guess. Exactly. Um, but yeah, Nick, the drive though, yeah, this, this, this car, the Mucky, let me, bruv, let me talk to you about this drive. I will say this with my chest wholeheartedly. At the start of 2021, easily the electric vehicle that turned the most heads. Really? Ever. Yeah, I drove. Yeah, it's a Mustang, bruv. It's a Mustang. It's, I forgot I was driving a Ford. And that happens when you drive a Mustang, innit? Like, it, it, this car was Mustang and proud. And, I, and, yeah. I, and I'll talk to you why I think about why I think Ford did this in a second. I think it's so smart. But, like, yeah, driving it around... When we shot this, we tried to go to a quiet place and shoot it so we could just get some nice angles out, anyone in the background. Disturbed a number of times. Um, excuse me, what is that? Like, what is that? Dri or driving it around, saw people like tapping each other, looking at it. Ha like, like, and I've only, the last time I had an experience like that probably was when I was driving a V8 Mustang top down during a warm day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, like, because yeah. the noise it makes, people are just like, yeah, yeah, yeah see what you're doing there, bro, rude boy. And like, when you're driving, like, and I realised, when when I last drove a Mustang, it was when you look at the p cost of that car. I was it was turning heads like it was a hundred and eighty grand car. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not. It's like fifty, sixty. And with the Mucky, it starts at 40, 40 grand, and you're turning heads like if, if I pulled up in a Mustang Mucky at a, at, a, at a beer garden, right on a hot summer's day, that's gonna turn way more heads than a Tesla. Facts. I feel yeah, like yeah. I feel like it's got a horse on it. It's got like presence it's got the sick mustang lights and i just feel like it just looks it looks different and i clocked it this is why ford did it this because if they tried to make like the mondeo e or the freaking i don't know <laughs> i don't know the the ford focus e as their like first introduction into the electric world it would it would have a bit of impact but Nah, man, it, it needs to be, they need to like show that they really care about making a good electric vehicle. Mate, you know what it's, I mean? it's an iconic car yeah. at the end of the day, you know, yeah. the Mustang. You know, when I went to America, um, I went to Miami. One of the things that I did, of course, rented Standard. a Mustang. You know what I mean? Standard. Driving down Ocean Drive, yeah. top down. Yellow. Right. And the thing is, at Miami airport, it was sick, bro, because I landed and obviously I, read, I, I reserved a Mustang. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> I just I just thought you get given what you're given, you know, yeah, like yeah, when you yeah. get there. So I went to the car rental place and the guy was like, okay, cool. Just go downstairs and speak to the, 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 the guy and he'll sort out your car. So I went downstairs and then, and then the guy was like, yeah, you can, you can pick anyone. Um, there was, and they was just bare Mustangs. He was like, you, yeah. can, you can pick anyone you want. So they had like, they had like black one, white one, yellow one, orange one, red one, gray one. Like, yeah. and then they, they, and then on top of that, they had yellow one with black seats, yellow one with cream sweet yes. seats, like orange one. And I was just like, oh my God, I was there for ages. I was like yeah. looking at them like, which one do I want? It's such a big decision. Tell and the then truth, I was like, in your head, was it like you were listening to Fast and Furious music? You know that Tokyo Drifting song? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the end, I was just like, you know what? <laughs> Fuck it. I'm in Miami. I'm in America. I'm going for the soft top yellow. That's where yes! we're going. You know what I mean? My guy. Yes, Nick. <laughs> Come on. So I just had to get the, the loudest one because I yeah. thought, you know what? This is, I'm living the American dream, baby. A hundred percent. You're a fool. If you, if you told me that you went in there and was like, yeah, Marcus, I went for gunmetal gray. I'd be like, nah, <laughs> bruv. <laughs> nice, obnoxious yellow. But yeah, man, it, like, like, you know, like you said, the, the, the Mustang is iconic. Like muscle, it's, a, it's American muscle, you know? Um, so the fact that they put that badge on the, on the Mucky made it interesting. Now is the Mucky a Mustang by nature? No, because it's not got the big roaring V8 engine. But is it a car that they've showed you that they care about by putting the Mustang badge on? A hundred percent. Does it turn heads? A hundred percent. The drive, it's an electric vehicle, so it's got a low center of gravity, nick it, and, and it goes. Mm. It's, it's, it's nippy. Um, 
and it feels like a nice solid drive and i like driving ford cars because they're easy to use as well i mean when you look at other other vehicles like your Lexuses and, and your Hondas, they're cool, but they've got a lot of buttons that you need to press and quite complex ways of getting around things. Yeah. The Mucky, you know, it, they've brought it up to the year 2021. You know, you've got your wireless charging, you've got your Apple CarPlay, you've got USBs all over the front and back, which you can plug in for yourself and your guests. And it's a, it's, it's a decent whip, man. It's a decent whip. Um, a couple of things that I'd, I'd tweak about it that I was a bit narky about, the, the parcel shelf at the back was a bit flimsy. Um it just like fell down a couple of times. It was a bit like, oh, come on, mate, put a bit of love into this. Um, but I feel like who, whoever was in charge of do, of, fi- of doing the interior of the car, that probably wasn't the highest of their, of their um, shall we say, uh, uh, objectives when it came to making the inside of the car nice. Um, it's At the front, it's got a frunk nick. So because it's got no engine in there, there's space for you to do have more storage, um, which is nice. It'd be nice if you could adjust it a bit, though, because it's kind of got these fixed compartments in it where you, have to, you can't n- take them out. I'd love to like just put what I want in there. Um, it, it, Nick, it just looks rude, man. I only had it for like two days. We shot it, took a few pictures. I, this was the one I was like, oh, what can I drop off the Nick's house? What can we kill an hour with so I can just drop it off the Nick's house and show him the whip? No, I, didn't, like, I didn't see you, bro. You know, oh, once man. again, had this lovely car. <laughs> did it, didn't even want to come and see, you know, didn't even want to come and see me. But but on a real, actually, it, it, you know, the reason they slapped the Mustang badge on there and the reason why the car is important to them is because manufacturers realise that yeah. this is the future of, yeah. you know, um, the, the, the future of cars. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's a fact in, in a, not even in that far in the future, um, you know, fossil fuel cars will be a thing of the past. Mm-hmm. You know, I, like even in our lifetime, for example, Marcus, I don't know if you can remember four star petrol. Um, oh yeah there used to be at a petrol station there used to be a black pump for diesel yeah a, a green green pump for unle- uh, unleaded which is what we got now and then there used to be a red uh, pump yeah. which was four star and i remember that's what my dad's cars my dad's car my dad's cars were all four star when i was growing up and now four stars gone it don't exist what what was it was it was it was it what, i think it's leaded was it all oh, okay oh so that was the one because Clearly not good for your health to have that around. Yeah. yeah. All right, so it's cool. like, I think if it's, un, I, I mean, I could be wrong on that. So don't come for me if so. Yeah. But I think, you know, that was, that's what it, what it was. So, yeah. you know, already we've seen that eradicated. Um, and the next thing to go, it, it's weird because obviously we were all pushed towards diesel, weren't we? It yeah. was like diesel's the future, diesel, diesel, diesel. And now they've gone, oh, actually diesel's quite bad. For yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> get, get unleaded instead. <laughs> But um, yeah, yeah. It, like in in the future, they'll they'll be gone as well, and it's it will all be fascinating. electric. Fascinating you know? to know that we're part of the generation that we're probably the last generations, should we say now, to be able to drive a petrol vehicle mm. and enjoy it, and maybe like because I think what's going to happen is a lot of people think that uh, petrol cars are going to be like criminalized. I think it's going to go the opposite direction. They're going to become more of a novelty. Like so, having a Mustang in 20 years time in 2040 you'll be like oh look he's got one of those old school petrol cars do you know like when you see someone pulling up in like a car that was made in 1910 and it does like a quarter of a mile to the gallon (laughs) with one of those like horns that's like (laughs) exactly (laughs) hissing smoke out the side of it yeah it's not even gone anywhere people you don't have animal right uh, sorry eco right activists activists chasing him down people are like oh look at that Look what cars he's in. Oh. Bless him. Do you get me? He's there. People having asthma attacks, coughing next to him. They're like, oh, bless him. Cute. Yeah. But, that'll um, be someone with a, a, a Golf Mark 1. Or, exactly. You know, like you say, exactly. <laughs> Mustang. People be, like, people be like, Dad, why is that electric vehicle making all that noise? Well, son, it's actually got a fire inside it. What? <laughs> yeah, there's an explosion happening inside it with this thing called petrol, which is a highly explosive, explosive liquid. And they're setting fire to it to make it go forward. People will be like, what the fuck? fuck you lot were nutters you drove around <laughs> bombs all day long yeah so um it's gonna be very interesting so yeah man long story short and this is editorial this is not no advert from from ford nick i'm not gonna lie mate if i had 40k sitting there and wanted to get an electric car and i wanted to just not look like everyone else i think the muckies the way i go you know bro and I, and i have had genuine people saying i want to get an electric vehicle what is the mucky saying? I've had a few questions in 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 my DMs asking me about this car. People are seriously considering it. Do you know what I mean? And I think with the Ford network that they've set up, the Ford Pass network, that could help you get around the anxiety of charging. But if you got if you got room for a home charger, you're wicked. Nick, yeah, you know yeah. with these cars as well. You know you get like a really long extension lead, which has just got the regular plug 
that goes into your socket at home. So if yeah. I was like rolling past your house, Nick, I could just pull up outside yours. Oh, Nick, give us a bit of a charge, please, mate. I'm struggling. I'll be like, you're going to contribute towards the electric bill, Marcus, because <laughs> if not, then I'm afraid not. You wouldn't just come to my place and be like, can you give me 10 quid for petrol? You know what I mean? <laughs> facts. Straight facts, man. <laughs> um, do you know what, Nick? I think that's pretty much what we've been killing time with this week. But you know what? We're pretty much coming up on an hour of the show. So I think we should wrap it up here at the moment, man. What have you got coming up that we can talk about? I saw you do some stuff for Red Bull recently. Yeah, so I've been doing these uh, series of podcasts for Red Bull. It got confusing because I'm doing two. I'm doing one called Beyond the Ordinary, where it's like me talking to lots of different Red Bull athletes about um, their careers, uh, why they're so amazing. You know, we spoke to a guy called Carlin Isles, who is an American rugby player, which mm-hmm. is which is mad because obviously you'd think if you've got the skills to play rugby and you're American, you'd play in the NFL. But he was scouted by the Detroit Lions and he decided that he wanted to play rugby instead because he just loved it. And he's actually the fastest rugby player in the world. So because he, he before he started doing rugby, he was uh, in the USA track and field team. So decided he wanted to go into into rugby and we have a conversation with him. So that's called Beyond the Ordinary. And I've got another one with uh, an England rugby player called Jack Knoll called Decoding Athletes. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's kind of all about Jack's career as a a, an elite level rugby player but also we get some of his teammates on we get some uh, other athletes on like Katie Ormerod comes on that who's a uh, uh, Olympic snowboarder and one of the one of the best uh, from Great Britain Uh, and yeah we just uh, we, we just we have a laugh on it it's not about you know that one there is really not about sport or 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 rugby it's just about us shooting the shit essentially and then sport is kind of tagged onto it so yeah if you want to listen to any of those you can find them uh on redbull.com or the usual place that you get your podcasts from might check that out sounds uh, like how to kill an hour but like yeah you know, i was about sport. to say i'm sure if, you, if you're listening to this um you know where to get your podcast from so great just search it yeah man wicked oh, that's good stuff man yeah I've, I've i've seen some clips on social media actually nick i will i will make sure i check it all out looks like you've got the recording set up looking good as well looking yeah, very so pro. so for the I've actually moved since I've re- we recorded that though, believe okay. it or not. So that, that's the coding athletes one you're on about. So yeah. for that, because it's a visual podcast as well, and because we're in lockdown and nobody's allowed to come near anybody, yeah. he was down in. So Jack Noel lives in Cornwall, so right. he was down. He was down there yeah, at his, you know, at he's he's got a gym in his back garden, and he was just in his gym. But I was in my living room and obviously it was done through Zoom and Red Bull had to send me a massive rig and I had to like set it all up myself. So I had this like lighting rig with like four lights on it, Um, you know, uh, and then I had to sort out all the mics that, well, there's only one mic, but I had to like have the mic so it looked good. I essentially had to set up like a little bit of a studio myself, which... To be honest with you, it was quite fun, but um, <laughs> e- equally, I'd, I'd, I'd quite have enjoyed it if somebody was there to do it for me. <laughs> yeah, and then one of those ones, yeah. It, like packing it down afterwards was the biggest pain. You know, like when you when you finish, you just want to be like done, but like obviously to finish and then like pack mm. up all of this kit and just you know, what's mad is when Red Bull said they were going to send me some stuff. You know, I thought because I've got my own stuff, I've got. I've got these little lights. I'm, I'm holding one right now, and it's like I can hold it in the in the palm of my hand, you know. And mm-hmm. it's e- it easily does enough to illuminate my face and blah blah blah. So I thought they'd just be sending something like that, and then this stuff arrived. A big like van arrived outside the house, and I'm like, this this can't all be for me. And then just box after box after box of stuff came in, and I was like, <laughs> what is go-? my housemate who I lived with at the time? She was like, what the hell is all of this? <laughs> So I was thinking, oh my God, this is, this is mad. And, and the thing is, I didn't end up using most of it. I just ended up using the lights um, and that's it because they just, this, they went over the top with it, but the product looks good. So that's all that matters. Have you got these lights lying around now? And no, they, 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 they cur- I had to send them back to a courier. <laughs> they were the, the ones that are kind of like um, LED panels, but um, they're floppy, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like... Mm-hmm. Um, so they're not they're not like hard they're not like old school kind of you know ones that you had to rig from the ceiling they can fit on like a tripod and stuff like that it was it was, it was pretty nice to have the professional looking setup in the uh, in the living room at the time I'm not gonna lie but um, wouldn't have been able to keep it in there full time because it meant that my housemate was unable to watch TV in the <laughs> evening so I felt a bit harsh 
but that is the way of the Zoom world we live in now. We're just we're just zooming towards that kind of future, Nick. Do you exactly. know what I mean? I can't Unintended. wait for it to be. I can't wait for it to be over. To be fair, it'd be nice to uh, be able to come into the the How to Kill an Hour studio and and do a, an episode there. Yeah, do you know what's mad? Like we just used to roll up to each other, spud each other, shake hands. You know what I mean? Shoot Look, the shit. You know all yeah. of that. Yeah, and then now it's like I think the first time I like grab someone, handshake, and you know when you do that thing where you just bring them in, spud them, slap yeah. them on the back a little bit. That's super intimate now. I know it's weird, isn't it? It's like back in the day we would like where where your studio is. There's like a like a canteen cafe yeah. thing there as well. So you know we would go and eat some food in there. Now if you wanted to go and eat food, it's like you got to get a hazmat suit, mate. You know, <laughs> just to sit in there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. Uh-huh. All right, man. Well, look, Nick. I'll make sure I put links to that new um pod in the show description and thanks for joining us on how to kill an hour man um let's get you back on sooner than later i'm definitely under some pressure to get some tech to you and also uh you want to be on the first plane out of here by exactly the of things yeah so yeah. make sure you uh you, you make that happen when you got to shoot out of the country you know even if you just need someone to carry some kit give me a shout well you know how to do the lights now anyway don't you exactly so, <laughs> right so where can we find you on social media nick um at nick bright on insta is probably the best uh, place to get at me okay are you are you doing tiktoks yet are you TikTok i'm yet? i'm not I'm, I'm bro i've had a look at tiktok and i'm just like pff, i'm too old for this shit you know <laughs> like i don't want to be a granddad on tiktok trying to trying to look cool so i just thought you know what i'm gonna I'm give that one a miss do you know what i'm doing tiktok but i'm not i refuse I'm not dancing on the timeline like a bad yeah, bee. Yeah, I'm not, I'm I can't not wait doing to it. see Marcus doing the savage dance, <laughs> you know, or whatever the cool one is now. <laughs> the silhouette one. Should I do the silhouette one? Just yeah. swinging. The it's silhouette just challenge. Swinging around. So yeah, silhouette challenge. No, I'm not doing that, man. Uh, yeah, I'm at Marcus Bronzy on all social medias. We're at How to Kill an Hour as well. If you want full specs and stats or any of the tech about any of the tech we spoke about on the show, please make sure you check the links in the show description. And yeah, man, thank you for killing some time with us. 